Beethoven pounded his pianos with such force and practice that he destroyed seven of them. Franz Liszt also hammered a piano to pieces at a concert, and when the crowd went wild, he made it a part of his act. In the late 1950s, wild man Jerry Lee Lewis abused his pianos, jumping up and down on them, dancing on them, flipping them over, and even setting one on fire. In 1967, seeing a musician destroy their instrument while playing it still had the power to move people. At Monterey Pop, Jimi Hendrix famously torched his guitar, thrilling audiences and critics, shocking some, and leading others to scratch their heads in bewilderment. Why would a musician destroy his own beloved guitar? Monterey Pop wouldn't be Jimmy's first time burning an axe. He first burned his guitar a few months earlier on March 20th, 1967, during a European tour with the Walker Brothers. It was at the Astoria in London, the first night of a 24-day tour with the Walker Brothers, Cat Stevens, and Engelbert Humperdinck. And according to rock journalist Keith Altham, it was Altham who came up with the idea initially. I was backstage at Finsbury Park Astoria. Chaz turned to me at one point and said, how are we going to steal the headlines this week? So I said, well, you can't keep smashing the guitar because people will just say you're copying the Who. You've got to find something original to do. Why don't you set fire to the guitar? There was silence in the dressing room for about 10 seconds, and Chaz turned to Tony Garland, who was his PA at the time, and said, Tony, go out and buy some lighter fuel. That is how Guitar Flame was born. And so, during that night's performance of Fire, Hendrix placed a guitar by the side of the stage and Chandler doused it in lighter fluid while the rhythm section continued playing. Hendrix then grabbed the axe, laid it on the stage, and tried to light it. After a few attempts, it burned into impressive flames that rose several feet in height and actually burned Hendrix's hands. Hendrix finished the show regardless and was brought to the hospital later that day to have the burns treated. That was the first time Hendrix torched his instrument. That Fender Stratocaster, burned on stage by Hendrix in London, sold for £280,000, or about $500,000, at a 2008 London auction of rock memorabilia. Fast forward a few months to June 18, 1967. Monterey Pop Festival was a three-day event in Monterey, California that showcased some of the biggest names in the music industry at the time. In addition to the Jimi Hendrix experience, The Who, Janis Joplin, The Grateful Dead, Ravi Shankar, and Otis Redding also performed. Jimi Hendrix was relatively unknown to American audiences at the time. He'd been gaining attention in the UK and Europe with his electrifying guitar skills and innovative style. His manager, Chaz Chandler, saw the festival as a prime opportunity to introduce Hendrix to the American audience. The Who were also relative newcomers in the States, and also aiming to impress the American music press with an intense, high-energy rock show. And so there was a bit of friendly rivalry between the experience and The Who. Who would blow away the crowd, and more importantly, the press? According to legend, Hendrix and Pete Townsend were quote-unquote dueling guitars backstage to determine who would go first. But according to Pete, Jimmy was the only one dueling. I've heard Roger talk about it as a jam session, but it wasn't a jam session. It was just Jimmy on a chair playing at me. Playing at me like, don't f with me, you little s***. Finally, they flipped the coin, and The Who won the right to go first. The Who were established in Britain partly through their intense live performances, some of which culminated in Pete Townsend and drummer Keith Moon dramatically smashing and kicking over their gear. They did not disappoint. The short set was musically high energy and intense with great performances. Pete smashed his guitar on stage as he normally would do. It was wild, new, and exciting. The crowd was blown away, so Jimmy had to top that. The Grateful Dead followed The Who leaving a determined Hendrix to close the night. Dressed in flamboyant attire, Hendrix launched into a blistering set that would set his career ablaze and forever change the perception of live rock performances. From the very beginning, Hendrix captivated the audience with his raw talent, charisma, and showmanship. He unleashed his guitar prowess, incorporating feedback, distortion, and wild techniques. Before performing, Jimmy had cracked his guitar, 
and so he decided right then and there he would burn it on stage as he had done a few months prior. The burning guitar was entirely new and unknown. It was Hendrix's ace in the hole. And so, when the band wrapped up their set with Wild Thing, things got wild. The music disintegrated into shards of crashing rock noise. Hendrix swings his guitar around, coaxing out howls of feedback before placing it gently on the ground, squirting it with lighter fluid and lighting it on fire. He coaxes the fire up with his fingers, almost in a prayerful pose, reverently squirting it with a few more rounds of fuel. He stands up, swinging the axe around his head, smashing it into the stage and amps. The crowd seems alternately shocked, delighted, and with some poor souls completely zonked out on drugs and drink, missing the show of a lifetime happening right in front of them. It was what he did to his instrument that appalled me. Here he was throwing lighter fluid on his guitar and setting it on fire. I'd never seen anything like this in my life. Hendrix burned his guitar because it was a way to get noticed and generate buzz around his name outside his playing. At Monterey, many music critics were in attendance and they were paying attention. His performance coupled with burning the guitar proved to all the music critics that he was something special. And this worked. Concert promoters loved his music but they also loved the theatrics, like burning his guitar at the end of the show. And as a result, the Jimi Hendrix experience got lots of gigs. Hendrix's guitar burning act was also seen as a symbolic statement, representing the destruction of traditional musical norms. Like Beethoven, Jimi Hendrix came to represent the birth of a new era of music. It was a powerful visual spectacle that captivated the audience and became a defining moment in rock music history. Hendrix would later explain, I decided to destroy my guitar at the end of the song as a sacrifice. You sacrifice the things you love. I love my guitar. After much success and fame, Hendrix got tired and frustrated with smashing and setting his guitar on fire. All he had to do was destroy the guitar and the crowds loved it. But Jimmy was beyond gimmicks. He just wanted to play. Hey, if you dug that, please click like and subscribe to the channel. It's a huge help, man. Appreciate it. And check out these videos. This one's about Woodstock. And the other one is about Wayne Allman. All right.